Welcome back viewers of AVG News. My name is Mkoli Sinube, most of you already know. And I'm here to respond to questions from people who are trying to apply for temporary residence visas in South Africa, which is permits. Uh, especially those who are moving from the Zimbabwe exemption permit to the mainstream South African permits, but do not know what they are required to submit at the VFS offices when they've been called for appointment. So this is what I'm going to respond to. There are six things that you need to take to the VFS. I'll respond to them and I will tell you what they are, where I can explain or where they need to be explanations. I'll explain them to you. But before I go ahead, may I request that you subscribe to this channel, like this video and share it. So those who have not yet applied or who do not know how to do it, you go to the VFS Global website. So you can go to Google, search for VFS Global South Africa ZEP. Then the first link that appears there, which is the topmost one, is the one that you should press. Once you click there, it will take you to a VFS website underneath there is uh, a portal or a link which takes you straight to where you will then apply the process of applying is not different from the one that you've been using from the dzp up to the zep i hope you're all conversant with that one if you are not you can seek assistance from those who own internet cafes or anyone who is conversant with the internet these are the things that you need to produce because first and foremost when you have applied you will download two forms after i finish the application process you will download two forms the first form has got payment details at the bank it's a standard bank uh, account and you need to pay something like 1735 at the bank so you just take the money to the bank the value is written underneath uh, the, the receipt. Then you take it to the bank, just hand it over there, give them the money, they know what to do. The second form that you print out is a checklist of the things that you need to produce. But for the benefit of those who want to know what these are before they can even apply, I am going to mention them out to you i'm gonna read it out because i have a checklist ready here with me so what you need first and foremost is a duly completed online form and they don't want uh, handwritten forms which will not be accepted by the department of home affairs so this form is the one that you fill in while applying online on the vfs global website the second thing that you need is a letter signed by the employer citing the requirements to be waived and a comprehensive motivation for each requirement. So this is for a waiver application for a temporary residence visa. You also need a copy of the applicant's curriculum vitae, which is a copy of your CV. The fourth item that you need is a copy of the applicant's passport and all temporary residence visas are fixed therein. So if you have had a DZP, a ZSP, and a ZEP, these are the copies that you need to also produce for submission at the VFS offices. A copy of the employment contract signed by both the employer and the employee. This one is self-explanatory. The sixth thing and final is a background on the company or institution for record purposes. So this is the company that you're working for. 
this is the company that you own, this is an institution that you're working for, or a, an institution which is vouching for you. I hope uh, this has been explained. For those who apply for exemptions, you need to produce a duly completed online form. You need to produce a letter signed by the applicant size, citing reasons for the exemption and a comprehensive motivation for each reason provided, a copy of the applicant's CV, a copy of the applicant's passport and all temporary residence visas are fixed therein, a copy of the employment contract signed by both the employer and the employee, if applicable, a background of the company institution for record purposes, if applicable, any other information that would vis that would assist the minister to make an informed decision when considering an exemption. So this, an exemption, for example, you will realize that it says uh, a copy of the employment contract signed by both the employer and the employee, if applicable. So this is where if you have your own company, you don't need to produce uh, an employer contract or an employment contract, except maybe if you can produce a contract with your suppliers or clients. But for your company, you then need to, for example, ask for an exemption on the 5 million rand requirement for somebody who's applying for a business permit. If your company is already here, you were working on the on a business permit under the ZEP, and you want you you don't meet the threshold of my five million rents, then you can apply for an exemption on that particular uh, point. Background of company of, of on the company institution for record purposes, if applicable. This one is clear. So I hope I have clearly explained. But if there's something that you believe that I waffled on, or where you believe that you need an additional explanation or where you didn't understand or you have a different question that you want to ask in as far as exemptions and waivers are concerned, it's not a problem. Please write to us on the comment section underneath this video. Clarify, uh, ask for clarity where you need. Then we are going to come back and respond to you. You can also WhatsApp on 073-962-3075, 073-962-3075. Do not make a telephone call because we hardly ever respond to numbers that we don't have. And due to the large volumes of numbers, or, uh, or of messages that we get and phone calls that we get, we may take time to respond to telephone calls and we will not respond. I mean, uh, return calls, especially from numbers that we don't have. So you'd rather send in a, a WhatsApp message and we'll respond to every WhatsApp message that we get. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share. Thank you.